Hello there. Good afternoon to you. Uh, let's talk about racism, shall we? And Frank Hester. This is a man who's uh, donated millions to the Conservative Party. Um, and in reports uh, in The Guardian today, he uh, is reported, and he has accepted that he made the comments, he's reported to have made the comments at a meeting back in 2019. He's apologised for them. He described them as rude comments, not racist comments, rude comments uh, about Miss Abbott. Uh, but he said his remarks had nothing to do with her gender or the colour of her skin. Well, let me tell you what his remarks were and then you can judge whether they had anything to do with her gender or the colour of her skin. Uh, he said that Diane Abbott uh, made him want to hate all black women and that she needed to be shot. Uh, Diane Abbott herself um, uh, says that the, the comments were frightening to her. I mean, she has historically been on the receiving end of some of the worst racism imaginable. <coughs> and she was a leading um, black woman MP for many, many years and has has really had just a deeply distressing and unacceptable level of, ra of racism thrown at her uh, as a result of that. My question is a simple one, really. We've heard um, a lot of Tory voices this morning dancing on the head of a pin about this rather than just coming out straight and saying that these are disgustingly racist comments. Um, and beyond racism, you know, violence and misogyny as well. Um but I, I want to focus particularly on the racism element because I, I have a horrible feeling that the reason so many senior conservatives, up to and including William Haig, former party leader, former foreign secretary, um, the reason they feel able to go on to television stations, radio stations, online, newspaper interviews and minimise what these comments are is because they're relying on you, me, and everybody else being kind of inured to it. Things have got so bad and so grubby when it comes to our politics. Uh, and, of course, out on the streets as well, um, the, the, the way a number of different events in our national lives um, over the last decade or so have emboldened racists. I, it, it's, I, I suspect that the Conservatives who are saying are, oh, well, just a bit rude, are, are either just blind to racism, which I can't imagine, um, because it's a sign of just sheer thickness, but, uh, you know, anything's possible. Um, but it, I think it's worse than that. I think it's that they feel that they're safe to do so in a way that wouldn't have been the case just a few years ago. Let me give you a flavour of some of the comments um, uh, and then we'll talk to Dawn Butler, the Labour MP for Brent Central. Uh, this was the Energy Secretary and Net Zero Minister and Conservative MP for Beverly and Holderness, Graham Stewart, talking to Tom Swarbrick. He made clear that while he was rude, um, he's insisted that his criticism had nothing to do with Diane Abbott's gender nor the colour of her skin and he right, has so rightly he's saying apologised. He's not a racist. But but he's also not denying that he said that an MP should be shot. Are you happy taking uh, money from this man as a Conservative oh, Party? Is that a good oh, thing? Well, it's a, it's a good question, Tom, but you're asking me about a story that hasn't yet uh, been verified and is uh, still speculation. But what, not, whatever he it's, did it's, say, Mr it's not Hester... It's speculation he, no, you, that he's denied it, Mr Stewart. He has denied uh, well, using racist language, but he hasn't denied saying that the MP should be shot. That's, that's an appalling thing for someone to say. Oh, well, I haven't seen that. Well, absolutely. Um, what he has done is accepted that what he said was unacceptable and rude and apologised. Uh, and as I say, uh, what exactly he said needs to be uh, verified, but it was clearly unacceptable. Um, and he was quite right to apologise, not only but generally, money will be kept. But, to, but to Diane Abbott in particular. Uh, and just to give you a sense of what William Hague said, um, he said his comments, yes, do seem to be racist. I don't think I could deny that, honestly. But he also added that he felt people should simply accept his apology and move on. Uh, this is Lord uh, Marlon, Jonathan Marlon, the businessman and former Conservative Party donor and treasurer. This is what he had to say. I know Frank Hester, uh, as it turns out. And uh, the first question you, uh, I ask myself, is he a racist? And the answer is the Frank Hester I know isn't. He's an international businessman. He travels widely overseas. He deal, does a lot of business in Jamaica. He does business in Malaysia, uh, in Bangladesh and places like that. So he's not a racist. 
Uh, he made some unfortunate remarks, which uh, do sound racist, and quite rightly he's apologised for them. Uh, so uh, this, that, that's my view on the subject. Uh, there is obviously no room for racist remarks. Uh, he has said as much, um, and I think. And my my overriding thing is, I don't. He is not a racist. My view of Frank is, I know him, and I know him through a business connection. Sure. I know him to be a very good employer, by the way, who has a very loyal and close team of people who has created a great environment for people to work in in his business in Leeds and he's developed an incredible British product which he sells internationally Right, so he works in Malaysia so he can't possibly be racist seems to be the upshot of that one Um, Just before we talk to Dawn Butler this is Diane Abbott's statement in full that she put out this morning She says, it is frightening I live in Hackney and do not drive, so I find myself at weekends popping on a bus or even walking places, perhaps more than most MPs. I'm a single woman and that makes me vulnerable anyway, but to hear someone talking like this is worrying. For all of my career as an MP, I have thought it important not to live in a bubble, but to mix and mingle with ordinary people. The fact that two MPs have been murdered in recent years makes talk like this all the more alarming. I'm currently not a member of the Parliamentary Labour Party, but remain a member of the Labour Party itself. So I'm hoping for public support from Sakir Starmer. Dawn Butler, Labour MP for Brent Central. Good afternoon to you. Hey, afternoon, Sheila. Um, I, I saw you sort of gently shaking your head uh, listening to Jonathan Marland there. Oh, wow. Was that recorded? Respect- no, not recorded. No, I was just sorry. It was just, I was shaking my head at the same time, just to reassure you. Um, I mean, his comments in particular seem to just beg a belief, really, don't they? It's just astounding, Sheila. And the thing is this, like, you cannot say... I know somebody and they're not racist, you know, or they're my friend. You know, when somebody's accused of racism, the first thing you should never say is, oh, I've got a black friend, because that's not your get out of racist jail free card. You know, just because you've got a black friend doesn't mean that you're not racist. And to say, oh, he does um, business in Malaysia or Jamaica, what has that got to do? In fact, that makes me worry about how he treats people in Malaysia and Jamaica that he does business with. At the end of the day, for anybody to not see his comments as deep-seated racism is a huge worry because he didn't just say he hates Diane Abbott. He said he hates all She black makes him women. want to hate she, all black she women. Makes, yeah, she makes him want to hate all black women. Why? because she's just a black woman going about doing her job and that makes you want to hate all black women. There's something fundamentally, psychologically wrong with that. And then he talks about her starving and then he talks about she should be shot. Now, there was a person, um, Stephen Petty, who said that I should be shot in the head. He was found guilty and given, I think it was six months, uh, 12 months suspended. It is... It is such an awful worry to have this hanging over you. And I'm telling you, black women, black people are tired of this. We're tired of the the constant racism where it's where the door's been opened, where it's like it's it's okay. It's okay to be racist against a black woman. And the Prime Minister, if the Prime Minister doesn't speak up soon and call this out then he should leave office because his first job is to protect all sit all of his citizens that is the first job of government and he is not protecting us it would be interesting to see whether the speaker of the house of commons has something to say about it too because that's also a major part of his job as he made clear in that recent debate didn't he i i, I don't know whether he will feel he can intervene on this issue um keir starmer for his part in case you haven't seen it has said Um, Speaking on the ITV Lorraine programme, he said the comments by Mr Hester were abhorrent. Diane has been a trailblazer. She's paved the way for others. She's probably faced more abuse than any other politician over the years on a sustained basis. I mean, that's certainly true of racist abuse, isn't it, for Diane Abbott? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I tell you the other thing as well that, that this actually has highlighted. It's highlighted a number of things. Number one, this person um, has had nearly a, Uh, half a billion pounds from the government in contracts. 
He has access to 60 million bits of data from us, the public. For somebody who, one black woman makes him feel like he wants to hate all black women, he should be nowhere near our data, number one. Number two, he talks about artificial intelligence. He should be nowhere near artificial intelligence. With somebody with such deep-seated racism, you need to get them away from artificial intelligence as soon as possible. And the other thing is this. We're going to see this quite a lot in terms of the government has given money to certain companies and organisations, millions of pounds, some that we can't explain what we've got as a, as a result of that. And then that money comes back into the Tory party through donations. If this was happening in any other cu country, we'll be calling it corruption and we'll be saying there needs to be an investigation. And to be honest, there needs to be a huge investigation about where all this money is going. Do you believe they should just completely sever donation ties with him now? Yes, of course. They should absolutely return that money. But not just that. Every single contract needs to be terminated. I do not feel comfortable knowing that somebody with such deep-seated racist views has access to 60 million people in the UK's data and has been given almost half a billion pounds by this government. I do not feel comfortable with that. And I think we should all be concerned and worried about that. For his part, um, he says himself, or his, his spokesperson says, his statement, so he said he called Diane Abbott to apologise, um, uh, uh, but they've said it's, his statement is not a confirmation of the alleged quotes in The Guardian. Um, Mel Stride saying the alleged comments were inappropriate but not, not race-based. I mean, How can it not be race-based when it's about your he, colour. the very fact of what he said, it makes me want to hate all black women. What is that if it's not racism? Then I would like them to explain to me what they see as racism. What do they need to see? Does he need to wear a white pointy hat with two cut out holes for his eyes? What do they need to see to call out racism? Because, you know, this needs this needs to stop. If we want to, you know, people, I get attacked on social media or you're always talking about race. If you want me to stop talking about race, stop people being racist. Stop people being racist and I will stop talking about race. Do you think that some clearly not in everybody's case, but at the high highest levels of this country now, we we are we have leading people um, making making it a sort of a more comfortable place for people who want to speak like this. Well, this is this is the thing, isn't there? There is this uh, crossover, if you like, where people argue about free speech and the freedom of speech and people should be allowed to say what they want to say. Now the thing is there is freedom of speech but there's not freedom of hate speech. That's why we have laws and legislation because and that had to be brought in. I mean uh, Martin Luther King said you cannot I cannot stop the law cannot stop a man from hanging me but no the, the cannot stop a man cannot make a man love me but it can stop the man from hanging me. And so that's that's the thing about the law is that it it's there to stop certain things from happening. So you don't have to love Diana, but you don't have to love me. You can you can not like me. You know, that's no, not everyone's going to like me. But to say that you hate me, which is a very strong word to say that I should be shot is incitement. Or that the sight of you makes somebody hate every other woman who looks yeah. like you. Yeah, it's in, I mean, it's incitement and we have laws against that. And and also, Sheila, he started to call Diane. And can you imagine just finding out that somebody said you should be shot and then they're on the phone calling you? Wow. I mean, can you can you imagine what that that anxiety that 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 caused? Do you think that is a sign of his entitled his sense of entitlement? A hundred percent, Sheila, a hundred percent. His entitlement, his privilege, you know, getting all of these people to roll out and say, well, I know him. You know, every murderer has a friend, right? 
doesn't doesn't stop the fact that they're like a murderer. Do you, having somebody come out and says, "Oh well, you know, he was nice to me, but he, you know, he killed his wife." I mean, it's a dis. It, I mean, when are we going to move on the conversation so that we start getting to the root of the problem and we start making society better? That means that we have to we have to front this up. We have to understand that these conversations have to take place. And yes, it's difficult. And yes, I understand, you know, the prime minister is going to say, well, I'm the first Hindu uh, prime minister. So therefore, you know, we're not racist. Listen, if you don't call out this racism prime minister, then you are a disgrace to the office, an absolute disgrace to the office. Well, let's see. And that is I my mean, message will, to the he prime will minister. He will be asked, inevitably be asked about it. So he we'll has, see, to, we'll and he has he to call it out. He shouldn't he wait until to. he's asked, really, should he? But let's see what no. happens. Thank you, John. Good to talk to you. Dawn Butler, Labour MP for Brent. Central, your calls coming in on this already, and as well as your views on the government in this particular instance and on those comments. Um, it, it, he made these statements in a meeting. You know, it'd be interesting to get a sense of, of whether you faced similar things. But my main question is really uh, is it conceivable that the Conservative Party can maintain, uh, can keep the millions that he's put into the party? Can they? <laughs> 